it was in 1994 and I was being attacked by a former partner in front of my little boy at the time, a really horrific attack. And I knew I was dying. It was quite obvious <laughs> when the knife's in front of you that you're dying. And interestingly, the human brain does act very bizarrely to try and keep you alive. So I started singing nursery rhymes in my head so that I wouldn't leave and die that day, to, you know, just as a technique, a tactic to, to do, to stay. Yeah. And then I had a real sharp blow to the head. And with that blow, I actually felt myself go very woozy. But then I felt myself leave the body. And I describe it a little bit. You know when you hear a cork pop, that lovely yeah. sound? Yeah. It felt like that. This was like a release from you. You were going to I was trauma. released from my physical, physical shell. Yeah. And then I felt myself move at speed. And as I was moving, I was seeing either sides, tiny little snapshots, black and white photos. So when people say, you know, my life flashing before oh, yeah. my eyes, that's how you would describe it, like little photos. Oh, I've seen photos of people I'd met, and some of them I hadn't seen for years. So bizarrely, I was thinking, oh, I haven't seen her or him for years. I wonder how they are. Bizarrely, again, and that's a word I've said twice now, but I then started to see this light that was incredibly bright. It didn't hurt my eyes. And all the physical pain and everything that was going on back in the room sort of disappeared. And the closest I can call it, 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 it felt like I was so supported and so loved. I mean, I was fearful that my little boy wasn't going to be saved, yet I was feeling all this love and this acceptance. And as I was moving towards this light, I saw a triangle of people. And at the front of the triangle was my granddad, Sam, who my son is named after. Yeah. And as soon as I saw him, it's like, oh, my God, Granddad, you look so well. I was so happy to see him. He looked younger. He looked well. Obviously, he's dead. Did he <laughs> speak to you? I spoke. Did he speak? No, he didn't. I spoke. And as I spoke, I then heard someone say, it's not time to go yet, Doc. And I was back in my body, literally. As I went out, the reverse. But you say you were back in your body. Were you back in the moment? Were you back experiencing that pain? Yes, instantly re receiving pain and seeing that I was in a bit of a mess. Right. Um, Alison, we, we want to explain this today. We have got this expert who's done this research into this. But what do you think ha happened and did it change your life in any way? It definitely changed my life. I see it as a beautiful gift in an ugly box. I came back very different. Obviously, I had post-trauma stress disorder after something like that. <laughs> but um, I got myself well. And in doing so, um, I've been able to help other people over the last 18 years going through anxiety and post-trauma stress disorder. So it gave me my purpose. So you totally believe that was a, a near-death experience, but it wasn't your time. So there's no other explanation to, to you. It's more than a belief. Was. I absolutely know it. You know it. And my, my belief, though, is that for me to come back from that experience and for my son not to be killed that day, then we've got to come back to make the okay. most of living. Hello YouTube, for more of the same just click here and don't forget you can subscribe for even more of these amazing videos exclusive to our channel. Probably having to put my leg on every day or like waking up and having to use crutches just to go to the bathroom or into the kitchen. I think that's, that's probably what I find hardest because it's what's changed most, not being able to just jump out of bed and get on with day.